Hey, I don't know about you, but I am so fired up about this because it has been over a year since the last time I did this and I said that I was gonna do this. You know what I'm doing? I'm doing a 30 minute painting right now because I believe that sometimes you just need to force yourself into situations that kind of push you and uh, help you not paint so much in your head, but paint from your heart, paint from your intuition. And by putting an arbitrary time limit on yourself, sometimes you can see what is really inside you. Like you can create maybe a little bit more freely than you ever could if you just gave yourself an infinite amount of time. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna attack this painting. I'm gonna look at this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I am glad that you're here. So make sure you click like, subscribe, do all the stuff that you need to do so that you'll be able to catch these later in the future too. It's gonna be a lot of fun, but let's look at this right now. I'm gonna show you real quick. I got my setup paints, just normal cadmium yellow light. I've got two reds. This is naphthol red. This is quinacridone red. This is phthalo blue. This is Mars black and titanium white. Now I've got a square kind of panel here. It's a wood gesso board a panel. And I put on dioxazine violet as a as a underpainting. And what I'm gonna do, guys, so I've got my headphones. I'm just gonna pop these in and I'm gonna start listening to some music. I'm gonna put on the timer and we're gonna have a good time here. So let's do this. And if you want to, I encourage you, you know, it, whether you do it this first time with me or not, but come back, try this out, check it out, see what it's like to paint and try to force yourself into a, a arbitrary time limit like this. And uh, you might find that it's actually a lot more fun than you thought. And uh, just about ready to get going here. So I need to set my timer on my watch and then I'll start the timer here. Okay, let's go. We got 30 minutes. We gotta make this work. So I'm not gonna show you, you can't really see what I'm look, working on right now, but I'm. You'll see it come to life here as we get going. So what it is, is there's there's kind of a tree, some land and a road that kind of comes over like this and just a little bit over here, but then we got whew, a little bit of a field, little area there, and then a little bit more land, some stuff there, and then we've got this really beautiful sky. And we've got the sun that is bright and brilliant kind of coming in right in this area. So what I'm gonna do right now, just to make sure that it has time to dry and everything like that, I'm gonna come in right now and get a little bit of color on here. Oh, this is fun. It's fun to do this again. Okay. See now, it's gonna take a couple coats for this to cover really well for me, so that's why I'm coming in and doing this right now. But what can we do to create these trees? We need to get some good contrast in here. Okay. Do, 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 do. I want that sky. Like I said, it's it's gonna take a little little bit of effort to get it the value that that I want. OK, 
Okay. Now that's a bright color, isn't it? Beautiful. Thalo blue. Woo, baby. Look at that. So we're just moving. We're moving because 30 minutes isn't very long. And that's the whole point of this is that we're... We're seeing what we can get done. And I want to I want to uh, make sure that I get this this land kind of in the values that it needs to be. I'm loving those colors so far. Can you see a road? Hopefully, hopefully. And, you know, you just start putting stuff down, right? Because what I love about this kind of painting is it's, it's like all a prima. <laughs> all a prima. If you don't know what that means, it means all in one sitting, right? It's like you, you start and finish the painting. But this is like on steroids, right? It's like, okay, you're taking that idea that you're not going to overwork it. You're just going to be sit down, do it. And you're then you're putting this time constraint on and you're going, okay, not only am I not going to you know, work on this for days or, you know, even hours putting that time constraint on, but you're also, um, I mean, all a prima could be an all day painting is what I'm saying, but by constraining yourself to a much smaller time frame, you're really doing like ultimate version of it. I love these colors so much. Isn't color just the best? <laughs> it's like color and light, man. That that's that's my jam. That's what makes me want to paint. And I know it's true for a lot of people. Color and light. How beautiful is that? Oh yeah, this is fun. This is good times right here. But you gotta be a little bit nervous every time you start out on a project like this, right? Because, I mean, you're gonna watch me and this is either gonna be a success or it's gonna be a failure. You never know, right? I mean, every time you paint, there's always a chance. 
that it's not going to turn out, right? It's not going to turn out the way that you want or something like that. And so that's the thing that makes it exciting, right? Because if it was easy, it, there's nothing exciting about that, right? If it was just, oh, a guaranteed, like, you know, I'm just going to pop it in my computer and, you know, it's going to spit out some incredible image. Wow, that there's nothing exciting about that. There's nothing that you want to write home about with that. But, you know, you put yourself out there, you, you create something and, and, uh, it has the possibility of failure. All of a sudden, that's where your mind, heart, soul, everything starts getting engaged and it's, it's exciting. And it's like, oh, this is real. This is real. And you know what the only failure actually is too? And this is where you need to, we all need to grow in this is like, failure is just giving up, man. Like if you just get back, it doesn't, it's not making a mistake. You can, every painting's full of mistakes. That's one of the quotes that I love the most. It says, creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes. Art is knowing which ones to keep. <laughs> Don't you love that quote? But it's so true because, man, that's what creativity is. That's the whole point of it is like just allowing yourself to go out and try something new and make a mistake with it, man. And the best art is, is that which can look at mistakes and go, oh, but look at what just happened there. Now I can incorporate that into this painting. Obviously it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes you have something wrong with your design or something and you just need to get rid of it, right? You just need to like change, change something in a painting. But there are times that the mistake becomes a really cool feature in a painting. And I, I bet that you've experienced that if you've painted for a little amount of time. And I also would bet that some of the artwork that you have admired the most in your life, if you were able to talk with the artist, that you would hear from them, actually, there were parts of that painting that completely went haywire and ended up, you know, I was worried about it, but it ended up being a mistake that contributed to the overall feel of the painting and was able to become a really cool part but you'd never know it a lot of times unless you actually talk to the artist one of my favorite stories with that from some somebody that I've talked to was my sister who had something exactly like that happen where she spilled she spilled water on a watercolor painting and it really started making this paint run around and do different stuff than what she was planning and she looked at it like a you know a big mistake at first but then all of a sudden she just kind of got a new perspective she I think said an emergency prayer something like god help I don't know what to do and then uh she kind of looked at it again and she's like oh maybe that could maybe that could do something you know um and it ended up being one of her like this really cool painting and perfect example of a complete accident that ended up <laughs> turning into something magnificent. Okay. Okay. Let's see. 
Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to get out a little bit smaller brush. Here's where the actual sun is, right here. So yeah, if you struggle with being too perfectionistic in your paintings, I encourage you with a method like this. There's different ones. I could tell you three or four different ways to get over that. Um, and I, I do have a few. One is to use a big brush only. Like you can't use any anything small. Like not like this at all. You'd have to like do the whole painting with this brush, right? Like that's one way to force yourself, force your hand. Another is, um, to limit the actual number of brush strokes that you use in a whole painting. And then you have something like this, which is, okay, you're limiting your time on a painting. And all of them, if you use them, put, put them into practice. They're, they're amazingly effective at stopping you from overworking a painting. If you stick with it, if you if you actually do it. Because I know a lot of people that I talk to and myself included, one of the hardest things is knowing when to stop a painting. So if you have an arbitrary thing that like that that you put in there, sometimes it doesn't even mean that you have to stop, but it just slows you down enough that you end up, you know, like say I get done with this at 30 minutes and you, you or I'll just say you 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 do a painting and you say I got 30 minutes you get done with 30 minutes and you look at it you sit sit with it for a little while and you realize oh there's something there's one thing you know that I could fix over here and there's something here and you go in and you take another five minutes later and you fix the the two things that were really bugging you well you still only got 35 minutes in and what it did was it caused you to stop and really get specific about what am I going to do to fix this. You're not just going in randomly and just working and working and working again. You're actually thinking through how what you're doing is making a difference for the, for the better and being very intentional with that. And that makes a big difference. I want to I want to work on these clouds just a little bit because I want some of them to feel like they're it's a little bit smaller. Try to get a bit of a gradation in them as they're closer to the sun. This is where, man, I've got stuff that I'm like thinking about wishing I could get done and or like a vision in my head that I'm I'm not seeing it right now completely. And 
So I have to think through like what what can I accomplish? What can I what can I do? What can I realistically get done in this amount of time? And what's the most effective thing? Effective brush strokes, the most effective ideas to implement. What is it? Let's try to create this. I want to get this color a little bit more vibrant down here. I'm trying to get a lot of the yellow and see maybe what I might have to do. Let me see. Let me see if I got this here. Oh man, wasted time, wasted time. Oh man, this is gonna kill me. Ah, I can't even find it. I was looking for, <laughs> I was looking for an orange color. That I couldn't find. Wasted about 20 seconds. Important time when you only have 30 minutes. It was a mistake. Oh no. <laughs> But I do like this color. It's actually a little bit better than I was thinking. I was looking for the the cadmium orange because I was thinking it would be quite a bit brighter, and it might be brighter. But this is actually pretty decent. Uh, I don't mind this this color at all right now that I'm putting down. Okay, make it a little bit more reddish orange over on this side and I'm trying to keep these edges a little bit soft Okay, this is fun. This is fun. Look, let's get a little bit more of a transition in here. It's a little bit more. That means making it a little bit lighter, trying to bring a little bit of that warmer color in. There's gonna be a little bit, I mean, it's in a scene like this, you've got the brilliant kind of silhouette, the lighting in the background from the sun. And so it silhouettes almost all this other stuff, but there's still gonna be a little bit of, it's just like, if we could see, if we could, kind of like see where the lights fall in and everything. There's still a little bit of light that is hitting. It's just indirect light that's hitting this these other areas. So that's what I'm kind of like trying to do with a little bit of softer colors and
some of these places. Get a little reflected light of that warmth in there. Sometimes you just gotta exaggerate stuff. Maybe just make something up. I'm actually looking at a scene that doesn't even have a road in it. But I felt like the road would be helpful in bringing our eyes up into the scene. Okay, look at that, look at that. Man, we got a nice glowing road. Okay, where do we need work right now? This is the whole thing you evaluate. We've got five minutes left. Five minutes left, and we've got a little bit of work to do, right? Oh yeah. Oh man, that color got dirty. I wasn't looking, I was looking at my painting. I accidentally dragged my brush through the, the black just a little bit. It's okay, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. But I didn't intend to do it. Okay, let's grab another brush here. Where is it? Where's the one I want? This one will do, I think. Let's grab this and then mix in a little bit of that. Ooh. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. See. How's it looking? How's it looking? I'm a little bit nervous. Sometimes I'm I'm working so frantically I, I it's hard to even like step back and see everything. And that's kind of what it feels like right now. I'm like just hoping that some of this stuff is working together. Oh man.
Okay, okay. A minute 52, guys. Let's see. There's a couple things that are standing out to me is a little bit ugly. The dark marks up here because they're just out of place right now. Okay, getting so close. A minute, basically a minute left. So, what do I see? I'm looking, I'm looking. What do I see? Do I see? Ooh, that color. It's a little bit off. A little bit off. Okay, 30 seconds, calm down, be calm. Nineteen seconds, come on baby, got this, let's go. Maybe a couple little bits of highlight, I can get a nice highlight color. Oh, wow. Okay, there's the time right there. Okay. There it is. There it is. There it is. Okay. I'm so tempted to touch that again. But that's the deal, guys, right? Is you stop when the timer goes off. You stop. Now, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to just pull this up. Um... I've got it taped down here because I didn't want it to move around on me, but I want to just angle it a little different, look at it in the light with you guys and see, okay, what do you think? I mean, it's, it's a, what, what we can say is like, it's got some life to it, right? It's got some life. It's got it, obviously things that could be refined or maybe made a little bit better. Uh, but that's a little bit subjective too, because what does better mean, right? If you love the spontaneous feel of this, then you would just say, I love it. I'm not touching it again. And, and so that's the goal of this is to put you in a place where you just are, you're painting, you're creating, you're painting from your, your emotions and you're painting from your intuitive kind of the part of your brain that doesn't, it's like subconscious. You're not making always just really detailed decisions about everything. You're going like match the color, put it down, grab the color, put it down, figure out where the big shapes are, put them down. And, and, and then you're trying to make the painting cohesive and whole and uh, come together. So guys, I hope that you had fun. I know I did. I'm actually gonna turn off my music here because I wanna talk to you directly and just say, I believe in you. So thankful that you're here. Remember that you are loved, you're believed in. You've got this creative person inside of you that is so, 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 let me just say this. A lot of times the thing that holds you back the most is fear. And so what I've realized over a long time of teaching many thousands of people is that if I can encourage you, which means inspire you with courage on the inside, sometimes that's all you need. You don't necessarily need a ton of like specific skills or things like that. Yeah, is there stuff to learn? Of course there is. But one of the biggest things that you need is just the courage to go do it to say it's okay to make that mistake. It's okay to screw up a painting. You know, is this a miracle or is it a mistake? Hey, that's for you to decide. It doesn't really matter though, because what I did here was I accomplished something. I put myself out there. I took an act. I was courageous and I just went for it and I grew 
because of that. And so if you will come back to this and maybe try to paint along with me and, or set something else up, set yourself a timer, maybe just use your big brush, whatever it is that you're going to set that little arbitrary limit on yourself, but you're going to paint and you're going to do it. And you're going to create, you're going to grow so much, not just in your skills, but in your courage and in your character. And that's one of the coolest things that we're connected as people. We're not just compartments. If you're courageous in one area of life, it's going to help you be courageous in other areas of life. And we all need to be brave in this world. So guys, thank you for joining me today. I am so thankful for you. Take one more look at this. Ooh, hold it at an angle so you can actually see it. But thanks for joining me, guys. Guys, I really appreciate you being here and I hope that you had a good time. I will check you later in the next video. Adios.